Alright ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ivan and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be building, testing and playing around with a Slayer Exciter circuit. Now I'm sure most of you already are familiar with this circuit, but as I say, a little review can't hurt. So let's begin our little review by seeing how the circuit works. So it operates in the following manner. Firstly, I've got a power supply, V1. The V1 power supply allows a current to flow through our resistor R1. The current flowing through R1 resistor will go to the base of Q1 transistor. The base current will be amplified by the transistor because, well, the transistor has a gain and because the voltage on the base of the transistor will be above the VBE threshold, so there is going to be a gain. Now, this, ampl this amplified current will translate to a current flowing through L1. The current flowing through L1, and therefore the change in current through L1, will produce a changing magnetic flux. The changing magnetic flux through L1, L2 transformer, will induce a, uh, a changing current through L2. Now, L1 and L2 they're wound in the opposite directions, so a positive current through L1 will induce a negative current in L2. This negative current on L2 will go to the base of the transistor, Q1, and therefore shut it off. However, a current can't exist without a voltage, and the secondary coil it's, has a higher inductance than the primary coil, and therefore will produce a higher voltage at a lower current. Now, unfortunately, we may end up with a fairly high negative voltage on Q1 base. So in order to clamp these negative transients, while we're still allowing some current to shut off the transistor, we're going to want our clamping diode D1 just to protect the transistor. And yeah, after several iterations of this process of a pulse being produced and amplified and then shaped, the frequency domain of the circuit of that pulse will eventually converge to the resonance frequency of L2 and you get a beautiful sinusoid on the output over here. I mean depending on the amount of turns in L2 and I guess the inductance of L1 and L2 as well as their parasitic capacitances the voltages will vary. However you'll still have a beautiful sinusoid. Now for my particular circuit my L2 consists of a 0.2 millimeter wire wound around a 40 millimeter shaft at a height of 190 millimeters and uh, it has a resonance frequency of like 1.25 megahertz. Now L1 is also resonant and self-resonant actually. It consists of five turns of 1.5 millimeter squared wire around a five or actually 50 millimeter shaft and yeah it's also resonant at like 1.25 megahertz so it's a double resonant transformer now Q1 it can really be any transistor any transistor that said with a um, breakdown voltage of above at least twice the power supply voltage to deal with any spiking from L1 in my case I'm going to be using a BD139 transistor Although, realistically, any transistor will work for this, again, with set characteristics and uh, with a fairly fast transition frequency, they'll be above, let's say, twice the resonance frequency of this transformer. Now, as for our R1, I mean, realistically, it's not even that necessary for this circuit. I mean, there will eventually be some random pulse through the transistor which will still converge at said frequency. However, R1 greatly helps with the convergence time for the circuit and it really improves stability. Now, keep in mind, the transistor, depending on the transistor, the optimal resistance value, the optimal biasing resistance value, R1, will vary and it depends on the voltage too. So, after running some simulations, I found that like the best value for my transistor, BD139, will range from, let's say, 10 kilo ohms to 
30 kilo ohms at uh, our set of power supply voltage of 12 volts. Now I'm gonna go with 10 kilo ohms because the lower your resistance value, the more output power you'll get to a certain extent. However, again, it depends on the transistor and the best way to determine this is experimentally by just playing around with a potentiometer and seeing like when do you get the maximum output power versus when do you have the highest efficiency or when the transistor remains the coolest. Depends on your design and depends what you want to do with the circuit. So to recap, go for 10 kilo ohms if you want simple and if you're feeling adventurous, play around by all means. It'll be better for you. Now as for our diode D1, I mean any fairly fast diode should work. I mean preferably you'll be using a small signal diode or an ultra fast diode like a UF4007. However, if you don't have access to those, one trick you can use is just use a regular red LED. It'll be perfectly good enough for the circuit. However, keep in mind that you may get some high-ish transient spikes through the LED, so it probably won't last very long. But that depends on the height of position of your L1 coil, as well as the parameters of the transformer. So yeah, if you want simple, just use a regular LED or a signal diode. But if you want complicated, you can play around with the parameter of this diode. And last but not least, for our capacitor C1, I mean, I'm using a 0.22 microfarad capacitor. It can be really any low ESR capacitor, which will just help provide the um, current transients one of the transistors switching. Over again, any like polypropylene or small value capacitor should work just fine. That said, you may want to use in parallel with this capacitor a higher value capacitor like a 470 microfarad capacitor over here to help smooth the power supply ripple as it's gonna be at a lower frequency and you'll be better off using that so a lower value I mean sorry a higher value for a lower frequency and yeah alright ladies and gentlemen well now that we know that the Slater Exciter works and how it works let's have some fun and actually build it get our hands dirty if you will so let's see what components I'm using so over here I've got a uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor Let's say brown, black, orange, gold. So that's a 10 kilo ohm. I think that's 15% tolerance. So perfectly good enough. I've got my regular red LED. So that's a 5 millimeter, 5 millimeter regular red LED. Nothing fancy. Then I've got my uh, capacitor. Unfortunately, I didn't have a 0.22 microfarad capacitor on hands. So I went for this 0.47 microfarad WIMA MKS4 uh, polypropylene pulse capacitor. It's going to work perfectly fine and goes to show that the circuit is very versatile and can be built with pretty much any components which even loosely fit the bill. And last but not least, here's my BD139 transistor. I already mounted onto a heatsink and a little bit of thermal paste applied. Granted, it's a little overkill as the power generation will be maybe a couple watts but better safe than sorry so now let's see the circuit on the breadboard so over here I've got it set up on a little breadboard so here's the resistor here's the LED and here's the um, capacitor so this rail over here and this is going to be the negative and this is going to be the positive and this is going to be for our feedback so where the um, negative connection of our secondary coil is going to go and our primary coil will be running from this middle pin over here to our positive pin which is going to be either here or here so let's connect up our coil and fire up the circuit alright ladies and gentlemen so over here on the bench I've got the Slater Exciter circuit set up so as can be seen the secondary coil is this beauty over here and this is my primary coil. The primary coil is connected comfortably to the positive rail and to the um, collector of the transistor. The um, secondary coil return is comfortably connected to the base of the transistor 
And then the negative lead of the circuit, the negative rails, connects to the battery negative, and there is a grounding. The circuit is not yet turned on, so the positive rail is disconnected. And as can be seen, right now, nothing is really happening. And as you can see, my oscilloscope output is pretty boring nothingness. So let's turn on the circuit. So let me connect the green wire, which is the positive rail, to the 12 volt rail of the battery. Like so. So yeah, now that's connected. As you can see, the LED is on. That's working. The bulb has light up, has looked up, so it's glowing, so that's good. And that works. And the resonance frequency is one point like one point five ish one point one five ish megahertz. So that's pretty good for a free hanging probe. So let's observe what happens when I bring my hand closer to the coil. So as you can see, well, actually let me go over here. So as you can see, the resonance frequency is going to shift down. Now it's resonating at 1.043 megahertz, one point, like one ish megahertz, because my hand creates a large parasitic capacitance. So let me now remove my hand. And now the frequency is back up to 1.15 ish megahertz, which is pretty close to the 1.2 megahertz I calculated. Now last but not least, let me bring a Nixie tube close to the circuit. Magnetic nice pretty well. Let's pull an arc. So let's zoom into this, because I don't want my camera to go bananas from the EM field. Come on you focus. Alright, let's get the... Ah, oh, there we go. Alright, let's pull the arc. That's something. And for some reason it's sticking. It's pulling a pretty cute little arc, I'd say 3 millimeters, so about 10 kilovolts. Which is not bad. Let's see if the transistor is getting heated. No, well, pretty cold. So yeah, there you have it. The Slater Exciter Deluxe. Thank you.